Hi, boys and girls. Today we are going to learn about something really cool. It's called hydroponics. It's a type of horticulture, which is a method of growing plants, usually crops, without using soil. Instead, we use a mineral nutrient solution that flows past the roots. The roots are held and the plant is held in a small amount of dirt, maybe like a little dirt pod, or it could be done in gravel or some other kind of material just to hold the plant in place. But all of the food and nutrients comes from the water solution. So that's what we're going to build today. Hydroponics has one major advantage over every other system is that it decreases the amount of water we use. In fact, in our hydroponic system, we'll use very little water at all, and it will just constantly cycle through the system. There are lots of vegetables that need lots of water, like tomatoes and peppers and cucumbers and strawberries and lettuce and all of those kinds of things need lots of water to grow. The first project I'm going to show you is a project that you can do at home. It's called a static solution culture. In a static solution culture, plants are grown in containers of a nutrient solution such as a mason jar. Or you could do it in a pot or bucket or tubs or tanks. Usually the solution is gently aerated, but it may be unaerated. That means, you know, add some bubbles, shake it. The solution level is kept low enough that the roots are above the solution so they get adequate oxygen. There's a hole in the top of the tank, which would be a mason jar, for each plant to sit in top. If a lid's used, then uh, we don't want to cover the plant over. We want to make sure that the lid is open. So usually in a mason jar, you have the two pieces. One, it's a lid and one is just the ring. So we're going to use just the ring. So we're going to dedicate one mason jar to one kind of plant. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first step is to take a mason jar and fill it with water. Be sure it has the metal ring on it so you can place a basket in it and the basket will be held up by the metal ring. Now this basket you can get on the internet. It's specifically designed to hold little circles of dirt. You can also sometimes find them at gardening centers. Now, if you don't have this, and instead you would like to use something that you can find maybe at a supermarket, you can use cheesecloth. And you can put the ring over the cheesecloth like this. And push the cheesecloth down, make sure it's touching the water and then screw your lid back on top. So that will work as well, but it's a little bit more difficult to deal with later on if you have to change the water. So I'm going to use the basket. So I place my ring on top of my mason jar. Place my basket inside my mason jar. Now I have these little circles of dirt. They will puff up once they're exposed to water. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to sit it here in the water and then I'm going to let it sit and we'll come back in a second to see how it did. And look, it has now puffed up with water. So instead of being a little circle, now it's a little mound of dirt, which still has some netting around it to keep it all contained. Our next step is going to be take our little basket out with our dirt. Now, if you're using the cheesecloth, you may want to do that part in a bowl. So that way, when you add your nutrients to the water, and this is something called floral grow, and it's just some nutrients that we're going to add to the water to help the plants get everything they need because there is no um, nutrients coming from the ground. It's all coming from the water. So we have to provide it. It's like liquid plant food. So we're going to put that in there. Now, the next step is to take our seed, 
which is here on the cutting board. You can see it's really, really small. This is a radish seed. And I'm going to take my pencil and poke a little hole in it. And then I'm going to take my radish seed and very carefully put it inside the little hole. And if you look carefully, you can see my radish seed sitting down there in the little hole. Now, to protect my jar from the sun a little bit, I have to add a couple things. The reason why I need to protect my jar from the sun is because the sun can bleach the roots and end up killing our plant. The other thing the sun can do is it can cause algae or that green stuff to float inside of our jar and turn our jar green and that would suck up all of the oxygen that our plant needs and our plant would not survive. So we're gonna do two things to fix that. First, I'm gonna take these little rocks. I'm gonna place them around where our plant is going to grow. And that'll keep the sunlight from getting down through the top of my jar. And I want to make sure I leave space for my plant to grow. Then I'm going to take a piece of paper that I have rolled up and taped that is the size of the jar. And I'm going to place that around the jar. Now, you have to be careful when you pick this up and sit it on the windowsill that you don't pick it up from just the paper because it could slide right out. You want to make sure you hold the lid and the paper and pick it up and then put it on your windowsill. So I'm going to put this on my windowsill and we're going to watch it to see what happens and watch it grow. Hi, Mr. Hi, McLaughlin. Mr. McLaughlin. What are you up to? Hi, I am. Hi, Sarah. I hope you're having a great day today. I was just about to flip outside and show the kids how to build this really awesome hydroponic set. Well, that sounds really cool. We'll stay here and watch. Huh. Well, I'm in the real life. I'm on my deck now. The only thing is, I don't think this is gonna work to do some work for this project. I think I need to change clothes. Ready? One, two, three. So that's better, much better. So now let's look at things that we have over here on the table that we're going to use to build our hydroponic set. First, I have these which are called WYE connectors, and they have the right shape for our hydroponic tree tower. And then I cut out from a PVC pipe all these little pieces. I'm gonna use these to stick my little trees together. This and that connects like this, and it'll stand up like that. Then, with my tree built, I'm gonna take these little baskets. The little basket goes inside the little cup. And then we take our little dirt, just like we did in our mini version, and we put the little dirt inside the little cup. So let's start Then I have a can, yes, minus the, the tubing. I have this can and I've cut two holes in the top, one for the tree to come out from the can and the other one is for the wire for the pump to come through. And then finally, I have my blue bucket here. You see, my can leaks. So I need a liner inside my can to keep my bucket from leaking all over the floor. I have some tubing. I have a little sump pump and this pulls water from a bucket and pushes it out here. We're going to have tubing on the end of that. I have a timer 
So that way the pump can turn on and off because we don't want it to always be running. And then I have some rocks to put in the bottom of my bucket to make it one, a little bit more stable. So it's heavier and two, because I think it helps filter the water a little bit. So let's start putting this together. I'm gonna change the angle of the camera a little bit. Okay. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start with my bucket. And then I'm gonna get my other bucket, get the leaf out and put it inside. And then I'm gonna get this tube here that I pre-drilled a hole in so I can get my water pipe to run through it. Now the water pipe is gonna come through here and all the way out the top of the tower. So let me get my water pipe. So we wanna start that into our tube, put it this way. And you can see I'm gonna start filtering it straight up, but rather than filtering it all the way up and pulling it all the way through, I'm gonna come down from the top I learned that the hard way. It takes a long time to push it through this little hole if it's using the whole tube. And I'm only gonna to get to the end anyway, so I might as well start at the end. Now I'm gonna probably need to adjust this a little bit. That's good. So now I'm gonna put this in the center and I'm gonna start filling my blue bucket with some rocks. Holding this up. Okay, so now I have my bucket with my tube. The next thing is I have to put my pump in to my bucket and get that all situated. And this little spout connects to the end of the tube. So I'm gonna connect those and put my pump into my bucket so it sits onto the rocks. That looks good. Now my wire wants to come out this side, which is good because it's all lined up with the hole. And that'll look nice. I'm all about stuff looking nice. Then I have this little PVC pipe. And I'm putting this in this hole because the hole was cut out of metal. And metal is sharp. So I don't want to cut the electric wire. Now later, I might go back and put some caulk around the top just to seal the whole thing up. Hi, Mr. B, did you wanna help? So now we're gonna push our tube through very carefully because again, this is sharp. We don't wanna cut the tube, we don't wanna cut ourselves. I'm gonna push this down just a little bit and I'm gonna get my wire. and run it through my little PVC pipe so it's nice and protected. And pull that through. And there we go. Push the lid down and everything is really secure. And that's the whole idea. We want it to be super, super secure and super tight. So that way it doesn't fall over. Now I'm gonna do one extra thing. I have this little cart with wheels that I'm gonna put underneath my bucket because once we fill this with water and put the top on, it's gonna be kind of hard to move around. So we wanna make it easy to move. Now it's time to start building our tower. So I'm gonna start with my first piece. Now I could glue all of these together as I put it in, but I thought about that and I decided I want to be able to take this apart in case I need to clean it because plants have plant matter and it breaks down and sometimes that can cause a mess. Now, when you're designing this, you can choose to have all of the spouts facing one direction or you can choose to turn them 
in different directions. And I think I'm gonna to choose to turn them in different directions so it looks kind of pretty. And since it's on wheels, I can always turn it around in the room to get different amounts of sunlight. So I'm gonna turn them all to about 90 degree angles from each other. And I like the white PVC because I think it'll all look nice once it's all put together. And I think I'm gonna grow some herbs and I'm gonna grow maybe some lettuce, and I think maybe some baby um, radish sprouts, which are really, really good in a salad. We're getting there. It's getting hard to see me, we're getting to the top. Now I decided to go with eight. It's gonna give me a lot of height, but not too much height that it'll hit the ceiling. And I raised this up enough so that way it's up off the floor and should be able to get plenty of sunlight through the whole tower. Cause sunlight's important, but since it's on wheels, I can always, like I said, move it around the house, find a different spot to put it, whatever works. Getting taller. I think I'm out of camera shot. I think we'd better stand up. Let's readjust our angle. So now we can see me. And we'll keep going with our tower. Did that way and then we did the front and then we're back to the left again so front it's like a spiral going up I got two more pieces and you can see I've measured this out so the tube will come just to the top of my tree here and that's what I wanted Oops, one more piece, like this. Okay, so now I gotta put my last piece on, like this. Whoops, get my tube going the right way. There we go. You can see the tube just sticks out the top, which is exactly what I want. So, next step. I have this cool little spout. And when water shoots up through the spout, it hits this little cone and sprays. And it's gonna spray through the top. So the water will trickle all the way down the tube, hitting each of the little baskets as it comes down. And it's not gonna hit a lot. We don't need it to hit a lot. So put that right up there, get my cap. I put my cap on. Get that to bend a little bit better. I might secure that to the top later, but I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so now we have our tower built. The next step is to fill all of our little baskets into our pockets. And what's nice about these little baskets is if I need to take a plant out to do something to it, to trim it or to take care of it or to replace it with another plant, 
because the basket got nasty or whatever, or it died. I can do it pretty easily. I just pop the basket right out from the front, put it back in. So now I'm gonna put these little dirt pods in. There's a top and the bottom to these little dirt pods. The little ring shows you where the top is. So we wanna make sure we put them in top side in. And in order to make the dirt pods get bigger, we have to wet them and they'll start to absorb the water. So this is gonna be the test of our system. We're gonna start running the water in our system to see if enough water gets to our dirt pods to fill it up. And if it doesn't, we'll have to adjust because that's what being innovative is all about, adjusting where needed. And they don't need a lot of water, just a little bit of water. So now the next step is to fill our bucket with water. So I'm gonna take this into the kitchen, fill this with water, and then bring it back out. Okay, so now we have our tower all built. I filled our bucket with water. The next step is to turn it on and see if it runs and starts running water down our tube. I can hear it. It looks like the water is dripping on our little baskets. So now we'll see if the baskets get enough water to fill up with dirt. Now, the other really important piece here is this timer. This timer will repeat every 15 minutes if I let it. 15 minutes, excuse me, not fit every 15 minutes. 15 minutes on in an hour and then 45 minutes off in an hour. So in every hour, we just want this to run for 15 minutes just to get the water down. We don't want it to always run because one, that will burn out the motor. Two, that'll be way too much water for our plants. So we don't want that. So I'm gonna let this run for a while and we'll come back and we'll see if it successfully filled our dirt with water. See you shortly. Okay. So our fountain has been running for a while and what has happened is that our little dirt pods have gotten wet and they have started to expand. So now we can start doing some planting. So I'm going to plant some lettuce, but before I do that, I need to add some nutrients to the water. Right now there's nothing in the water and it's a contained system. So there never will be anything in the water to help the plants grow unless I add it. Plants need nutrients to grow. It's like plant food. So I'm gonna put the nutrients into the water. It requires one teaspoon of this per gallon. And I have about six gallons of water here. So I'm gonna add that now. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I have my six teaspoons added. And now I'm gonna plant my seeds. So I'm gonna start with these lettuce seeds. And I'm just gonna do one for right now because I think I wanna get some thyme and some basil. But I wanted to show you how to plant them. So we take it out of the seed container. Then I take my little basket that's dripping wet. I poke a little hole with a pencil and I very carefully place my seed into the pod. Once the seed is in the pod, I cover it up a little bit. And then I put it back into the hole that I found it. I think I want the first lettuce to go way up top so I don't forget which is the lettuce. We'll put it way up there. And now we'll come back and we'll take a look at it in a couple days to see if our lettuce has sprouted. 
see you shortly. So Sarah, I thought maybe you could show the boys and girls how we might use Scratch a little bit to tell our story. Like I told a story about how we made aquaponics. Maybe you could tell a story about how we do something else. That's a great idea, Mr. McLaughlin. Sarah, can you please tell us a cool story in Scratch? Absolutely, I can do that. So one of the really cool things about Scratch is that you can use it to create stories. And sometimes in school, we have to create projects and we have to create stories about things that we learned. So today, I'd like to show you how we could possibly create a story. So I'm gonna go into Scratch. I'm gonna make sure I'm signed in because I really don't wanna lose my work. And if you need a new account, you can set up a new account. And I'm gonna hit create. Now in Scratch, I wanna start setting up my characters and my backdrops. Now, there's a couple different ways to set up characters and backdrops. You can use the characters and backdrops that are built in. So we could go and click on the cat down here at the bottom and choose any one of these sprites. So if it happens to match our story, we can click it. So I'm gonna click on the earth because I think I wanna do a science story today. Now, I don't really want the cat, so I'm gonna get rid of the cat by hitting the delete button. Then we have to look at creating some backdrops. So I'm gonna, again, click on the little backdrop button down here and we could choose backdrops that are in our library there. Oh, look, so now we have the earth in space. So the next thing we may wanna do is put in some text. So I am going to create an event and I could do something like when green flag is clicked, but I think I wanna do an event based upon a click of the sprite. So when you click on the sprite, I want it to do something. So maybe we could get it to say something about the earth. Hmm. Let's find a fact about the earth. So I'm gonna to go to Google and we're gonna find a fact about the earth. Facts about earth. So the earth is rotating gradually and slowly. The earth was once believed to be the center of the universe. Um, the earth is a powerful magnetic field. Oh, I think that's good. So we could get it to say, the earth has a powerful magnetic field. And we could then maybe have two little marks up here at the top and bottom because those are the poles. So for this, I might draw a sprite. So I'm gonna go in here into paint. And I just wanna take a little paintbrush, maybe I'll fill it to red, and I'm just gonna draw a little mark right here. Okay, and there's my pole. And look, you can see it appears on the screen, so I'm gonna put it right there. But I don't want it to be there the whole time. I want it to only show up when I'm done saying the earth has a powerful magnetic field. So when green flag clicked, I am going to hide this sprite to make sure no one can see it. And go into looks and go to hide. Now, here's the trick. I need to get a message from the earth that says the earth has a magnetic field to once it says that to tell the sprite that's the pole to show up. So I'm going to do what's called a broadcast. So I'm going to broadcast a message. In broadcast message, it's right here. I can change the message. So I'm gonna create a new message and I'm gonna say, show poll. 
Then I'm going to go over to this sprite. And when I receive this message, so when I receive show poll, I should show the poll. Now, I have all this code created, and that's great, and it'll work. But suppose I want to create a second poll. Well, one of the things I can do is I can duplicate this sprite, and it will have all of the same code as the first one. So I'm going to move the second one to here. So now I have both sprites, and both hide on green flag click, and both show itself when I receive the message show poll. So let's give this a try. See, they're gone. And there they show up. So that worked out great. So that's just a little sample of how you might create a story in Scratch. If you have time and you have a project to do, why don't you see if you can use Scratch to create your project as opposed to using PowerPoint or something like that. Do something a little creative. When you're ready to share your project with your teacher, you have to one, make sure you're logged in, otherwise it will not share. And you can e hit share first, which is this orange button, and make sure it has a title, my earth project. And then down here, there's a button that says copy link. Click that button, click copy link, and then you can paste that into Canvas or Seesaw or wherever you need to submit your link. Great job. Thank you, Sarah. That was a really, really awesome explanation. I've had a great time today. I hope you have too. Bye for now. Bye for now. Bye for now.